So um, I want to share some good news. This is an open data conference, so I feel confident to actually show some data here. And this is some good news. This is actually done by a colleague of Kathy, uh, Dr. Keith Fugley. I'm very happy I was able to pronounce it correctly. And this shows that since the 1990s, the world's farmers have been producing more food using fewer inputs. So this is already happening. So the good news is we are on the right track. And the researchers actually also know what has been driving this trend. Um, it's mainly, there's a strong evidence for the investment into agricultural R&D and extension. So if you find some data and you, you um, do the regression analysis, there's strong empirical evidence for public R&D and extension. So what about private R&D? There is no data available that would help us to test this hypothesis. And this is creating a lot of problems for companies like Syngenta, as we are not necessarily perceived as the so contributing to solving this global challenge, but we are sort of perceived as the problem of this challenge. So um, that's something we wanted to change with the Good Growth Plan. So the Good Growth Plan are six commitments to sustainable agriculture. One is around resource efficiency. There is some on biodiversity and soil conservation, on, on rural prosperity, including smallholders, reaching smallholders and improving their productivity as well. So this is a monitoring and evaluation system, has a reporting system behind it. We define key metrics and we have targets that we want to achieve by 2020. Now the whole system gets audited by PwC and from the very beginning we wanted to be transparent about uh, what we measure, how we measure, and the progress that we are making. So in order to measure resource efficiency, we created a global network of almost 3,600 farms in 41 countries for 23 different crops where we can exactly monitor how much crops are produced and how many inputs are needed to produce those crops. So with that data, we can not only just show evidence that we are helping our customers, farmers, to achieve the global challenge of increasing productivity with using fewer inputs, but it also allows, helps us to understand what impact do our products, our technologies have in helping farmers uh, along this challenge. So uh, we have an independent company collecting this data for us. As I said, it gets audited by uh, PwC, a very rigorous uh, measurement process behind there. And um, I've been working with the data sciences team um, from Syngenta, based in Jellet's Hill. They're actually here with me today. Maybe you can raise the arm. <laughs> so um, they've been working with me from the very beginning on how do you measure this stuff? How do you measure yield? Is it harvested yield, marketable yield, yield at 25% measurement? How do you define a field? And how can we find the definitions that work for the whole globe? I mean, these are 41 countries, smallholders, large-scale farmers, different crops very complex, so thank you for your work, uh, your help on that. And eventually when we came to publishing the results of this, so first year of data is 2014, uh, Graham came to me and said, okay, Lisa, do you know how you're gonna publish all of this data? And I was like, yeah, I'm not really sure, let's see. Um, yeah, well, do you know the ODI? And maybe they can help us with that. And that's how it started. So we published six data sets, and the ODI helped us actually understanding how we can publish this so that it's searchable, discoverable, that it's machine readable, has all the metadata behind it, it's licensed using Creative Commons license, and um, the ODI was also so kind and certified this for us, so um, that was really brilliant. Um, so we published this data in earlier this year, in, in uh, April 2015, so this is the 2014 data, and um, you, can, you can go and check, check out this data. So, um, the impact this had was actually quite unexpected. So for us, the publication was part of a natural process of end-to-end -end reporting, but then we had some, uh, some things that happened that we didn't expect. We got a lot of positive recognition for doing that. Even from critical activist NGOs who usually don't like us, they said, well, we don't like the Good Growth Plan, but that transparency, that's a good thing. Even our senior, some senior leaders within Syngenta congratulated our CEO to this bold move. Uh, this, this is a step in the right direction, uh, very nice. So for me personally, 
uh, had a lot of impact in terms of outreach. When we launched the Good Growth Plan, we had five big events all over the world. We invited lots of different stakeholders, and we had a lot of social media noise. Now, with the open data publication, all it took us was a tiny press release, and we reached the same amount of people on social media like we did with our, so with our events. Now, um, more recently, um, I've been reaching out to researchers to share the farm data we collected with academia so that it may help to fill some of their research gaps. Now, what had happened is when we met for the first time, they already knew exactly what type of data we had, how it was structured, the questionnaire, they looked at the questionnaire, uh, and they exactly knew what we were doing and how that fits into their research agenda. So rather than discussing what we do, what they do, they just said, okay, we have nine research questions and we want to answer with your data and okay, that's done, done deal. So the speed by which we can discover new knowledge, form new collaborations and uh, make innovation is going to increase with open data. And I experienced this very firsthand just re very recently. Um, so our journey since. Um, now this ha had a huge impact on our organization. So the Good Growth Plan data publication had sort of a transformative kickoff in our company. We were thinking, how does Syngenta fit into this open data world? What are the opportunities? What are the risks that uh, we are facing if we sort of lose these opportunities? And so it's really sparked new conversations in our company. So. Um, Shortly after we published the open data sets, we joined Godan, and we hope that we can really contribute to um, make uh, global open data for agriculture and nutrition happen, for example, by working with Godan and its partners to harmonize data standards, to simplify how data is integrated and exchanged so that we all speak one common language and we don't have to spend two days to just merge two different data sets. So this is um, something we are looking very much forward to actively support with our experience and time and resources. So then uh, ODI did a lot of capacity building at Syngenta. We had about, we had three training events, one in Basel in the headquarters at Syngenta, in Gelatil and in the US. And we realized there's a strong need from our colleagues to learn more about how open data works, what it does for us and what it does for the company. Um, so that was really, really exciting. And we also had, a about a month ago, an internal open data workshop where we invited key decision makers in the company to, to um, uh, educate them on what's going on in the open data world. These are the opportunities we had, uh, someone from the ODI with us, um, and we explored the opportunities across the whole data spectrum about how Syngenta can, first of all, use open data to improve its business model and how we can also be more transparent in a pre-competitive way. So now for the next year, what we want to do is first improve our open data publication. As you saw, we publish CSV files. It's not very engaging or interactive. You have to download something, so we plan we hope to find something that makes it a little bit easier for humans to access this data as well and to understand it and put it in context, especially if we're talking about linked data. Um, then we are planning an external open data workshop jointly with the Godan folks, with ODI and other stakeholders that are interested in these topics to understand what type of data ecosystems do we need, how can we shape them, how can we build them in a, in a collaborative way and then how do we unlock this value? How do we use farm data for sustainability? Wouldn't it be nice if we can create a platform where farmers can benchmark their practices, uh, use of technology, and see this is the outcome that I'm having in terms of resource efficiency. This is what my neighbor's doing, um, all in an anonymized way, obviously. But um, if we can make the data that we collect available to farmers, that would be great. And um, we really hope that this external open data workshop will help us answer some of these questions in a collaborative way. So with that, we want to also scale up the farm network. So in this farm network, I, am, I have some growers from Australia who are interested what the farmers in Canada are doing. And I have to say, well, sorry, in Canada, that's the country where we don't have any data. So 
please, if you have farm data um, that um, is the same type of data we have, let's all work together and make this available for, for these farmers so that they can learn from each other, they can improve their resource efficiency and find out what works best for them in their particular situation in a very complex agricultural world. And with that, I'm going to close my presentation. Thank you very much.